Hello, everyone, and welcome. Mr. Ladage here with our first, very first video read aloud. This is a series I am super excited about. I've made it to lots of elementary classrooms this year and started last year too, uh, doing two of my favorite things. One, uh, reading aloud, uh, one of the things I always had loved doing um, as a kid, reading books out loud, having books read to me, then as a teacher and administrator here too, just being able to, to get into classrooms and, and read. And my other favorite thing is uh, sharing some of my favorite books. I always joke that I have a new favorite every time. And uh, every time I get a new book or find a new book, it's, it's my new favorite. So uh, I like sharing uh, my new favorites. And I'm going to have this be a regular series throughout the year where I will continue to upload uh, new videos of different books that I found that uh, I think are my favorite. So we're going to begin today with uh, this week's or this session's favorite book. And it's a, a great story about uh, a little girl and her imagination and happiness and kindness uh, and an amazing little box of yarn. Uh, it is a book called Extra Yarn, and it is written by Mac Barnett, who's written a number of children's books uh, through the years. But uh, this one, this one's my favorite of his. Uh, great story, and the illustrations are uh, pretty amazing. So we're going to go ahead and begin here with Extra Yarn. I want to begin by showing you the, the little town here and things that stand out to you and how you would describe it. Think to yourself how you would describe this little town. On a cold afternoon in a cold little town where everywhere you looked was either the white of snow or the black of soot from the chimneys, Annabelle found a box filled with yarn of every color. And there's Annabelle and her little dog. So she went home and she knit herself a sweater. And when Annabelle was done, she had some extra yarn. You see her cool little sweater there? And her dog watching over. So she knit a sweater for Mars too. But there was still Extra yarn. Hmm. Amazing, amazing. And when Annabelle and Mars went for a walk, Nate pointed and laughed and said, you look ridiculous. There's Nate and his dog being rude, pointing, making fun of Annabelle. And there she is with Mars. Nate saying, you look ridiculous. Hmm, you're just jealous, said Annabelle. No, I'm not, said Nate. But it turned out that he was. Annabelle knit him a sweater and knit his dog a sweater too. And even after she had made sweaters for Nate and his dog and for herself and for Mars, she still had extra yarn. Oh, school, school time. This school does not look very happy. Look how drab and boring it looks. Hmm, but there's colorful Annabelle. At school, Annabelle's classmates could not stop talking about her sweater. Quiet, quiet, shouted Mr. Norman. Quiet, everyone. Oh, Annabelle, that sweater of yours is a terrible distraction. I cannot teach with everyone turning around to look at you. Hmm, well, well, then I'll knit a sweater for everyone, said Annabelle, so they won't have to turn around. Ah, impossible, said Mr. Norman. You can't. But it turned out that she could, and she did. Look at all the sweaters that she made for her classmates. And they're all linked together even with the magic thread. 
And she even made one for Mr. Norman. Look at that. This is my favorite one right here. Little guy here with his thick sweater and scarf and all you can see here is see is his uh, little eyes peeking out there. And when she was done making all those sweaters, Annabelle still had extra yarn. So she knit sweaters for her mom and dad. And for Mr. Pendleton. And Mrs. Pendleton. And Dr. Palmer. And even little Lewis. They all got sweaters. Little Lewis with the big bushy beard and cane. All of those sweaters. She made sweaters for everyone. Well, everyone except Mr. Crabtree, that is. Mr. Crabtree, who never wore sweaters or even long pants, and who would stand in his shorts with the snow up to his knees. He would say, no sweater for me, thanks. Look at Mr. Crabtree there, with his cup of coffee or his tea, standing in the snow in his shorts and his shirt. Now he said no sweater, but Annabelle decided that she would knit him a hat. And even then, she still had, you guessed it, extra yarn. So she made sweaters for all of the dogs and all of the cats and for other animals too. See the big bear, the little bunny rabbit, maybe a fox that might be. Soon, people thought, soon, soon, Annabelle will run out of yarn. But she didn't. So Annabelle made sweaters for things that didn't even wear sweaters, like mailboxes and birdhouses and birds and houses. Look at all that. Look at all that. Oh my gosh, my goodness. You remember the beginning picture of the little town and all you could see was just white from the snow? or black from the soot of the chimneys and how drab and cold it looked? You're not gonna believe this. Things began to change in that little town. Are you ready for it? Look at the town. Wow. Look at how colorful the town is. All of the houses and buildings they all have sweaters. Beautiful. News spread of this remarkable girl who never ran out of yarn and people came to visit from around the world to see the sweaters and to shake Annabelle's hand. You see them there all lined up. Amazing. But who is this on a ship? with the letter A on his flag and an A on his hat. It is an Archduke. One day an Archduke who was very fond of clothes, very fond, he loved clothes. He sailed across the sea and he demanded to see Annabelle. You see him standing up on his ship, looking all proper and proud and powerful, probably used to getting his way. Little girl, said the Archduke, I would like to buy that miraculous box of yarn, and I am willing to offer you one million dollars. Hmm, no thanks, said Annabelle, who was knitting a sweater for a pickup truck. Oh, the Archduke's mustache twitched. Hmm. Two million dollars. Annabelle shook her head. No thanks. Ah, ten million dollars. He shouted. Take it or leave it. Hmm. Hmm. I'll leave it, said Annabelle. I won't sell the yarn. And she didn't. Oh no. Oh no. So that night, the Archduke hired three robbers to break into Annabelle's house, and they stole the box. 
and he took it to the archduke who sailed off across the who set off across the snow and he sailed across the sea oh no look the three ladders going up into annabelle's house and there's mars looking up at the ship that's sailing across the sea oh no what's gonna happen what's annabelle gonna do and he sailed back to his castle. So mean. What's going to happen? There's the Archduke. You see he's got the box of yarn on his lap. The Archduke put on his favorite song, and he sat in his best chair, and then he took out the box, and he lifted its lid, and he looked inside. <gasps> Look, it's empty. There's no more yarn. What happened? Oh, mm. his mustache quivered. It shivered. It trembled. The Archduke hurled the box out of the window and he shouted, mm, Little girl! I curse you with my family's curse that you will never be happy again. Wow, he's mad. He is mad. But you see the box landed on a little iceberg and it's floating across the sea. And it reaches Annabelle and Mars again. They've got it back. And you see the town is still colorful in the background. And the Archduke cursed Annabelle to be never, never to be happy again. But, yay, it turns out that she was. And there you see Annabelle and Mars sitting on a tree with the box and sweater, colorful sweater yarn covering the tree, along with some of their other furry friends. The end. And that's the story of Annabelle and her amazing, miraculous box of yarn, Mac Barnett's wonderful book, Extra Yarn. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book. One of my favorites, one of my all-time favorites. I have tons of favorites, but this is definitely uh, near the top there of my favorites. Um, so wherever you are at there, in your bed, on the couch, on the floor, I hope you enjoyed the story. Hope you settled in and uh, enjoyed uh, one of my favorites. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, until next time, au revoir.